so we have seen the parallelogram law of vector addition and uh, in this image you can see parallelogram law and triangle law both are going to be the same p plus q is equal to q plus p this is the commutative law that is also satisfied now coming to the resolution of a force into its components as we have seen any force can be represented as a vector and a vector can be represented as sum of any two force in this image shown for a b and c for all the three cases the force f is same so that means this force f here here and here all three are same but if you see the resolution in part a part b and part c all three are in different different directions so that means a single force can be represented in infinite ways of resolution and here you can see they are resolved along two axes these two axes need not be perpendicular to each other if a force can be obtained by adding two vectors then those two vectors can also be said as the component of the force f in those two directions then what is a rectangular component of a force the rectangular component of force are those components which are perpendicular to each other in this case this fx and fy are perpendicular to each other and when you add the fx force and fy force the resultant f is obtained similarly it need not be the horizontally the and vertically that you are resolving in any other direction if you are trying to resolve but still maintaining fx and fy to be perpendicular to each other then also you say that they are the rectangular component of forces with these as the pretext let us go ahead and see what is force equilibrium a body remains in the state of rest or in the state of uniform motion unless and until acted upon by an external force this law is the first law of motion of newton what is the state of rest when the vector sum of all the forces acting on the body is zero we call that as the state of the body of equilibrium what if the forces are not in equilibrium or what they are not zero then it is not in the state of rest so with this let us try solving one problem let us consider this problem find the resultant of the forces acting on the hook a also find the angle at which the resultant force is acting so to understand this problem let us make a table like this with serial number the forces the magnitude of each force the angle with respect to x axis f x that is f cos theta and f y that is f sin theta this is basically resolving the force into the x and the y component and then adding them separately so let us see how to solve this problem the important thing that you have to remember here to do this problem is that you need to have consistency in deciding the angles if you decide on a reference axis and measure all the angles from that reference axis then chances are less that you can make a mistake so let us proceed with this problem you can see that f1 is 150 newton acting at an angle of 30 degrees f2 is 80 newton acting at an angle of 20 degrees f3 is 110 newton acting vertically down and f4 is 100 newton acting at an angle of 15 degrees so here you can say that this is not a consistent method of defining the angle let us write these forces one by one so that we can have a clarity so serial number 1 the force f1 the magnitude is given as 150 newtons only the the units are written here so i need not write newtons again here 
Now, for the simplicity purpose and for consistency purpose, I measure all the angles with respect to the positive x axis in the counterclockwise direction. So, here for f1 with respect to the x axis, it is already given as 30 degrees. So, I will write that here 30 degrees. Now, serial number 2 is f2 and let us see how much is the magnitude. The magnitude is given as 80 newtons, 80 newtons and the angle. Now, if you see here it is 20 degree with respect to the positive y axis. So, from the x axis it is 90 plus 20. So, it is 110 degrees. Next, the third force F 3. For F 3, you have 110 Newton as the magnitude. So, 110 Newton magnitude and the angle. Now, if you see here, this is 90, 180, 270. It is acting 270 degrees with respect to the positive x axis. Last but not the least, the fourth force that is F 4, which is having a magnitude of 100 Newtons and the angle if you see is 360 minus 15, 345 degrees. Now, you just have to find out the F x and F y component. You take a simple triangle. If I have an angle theta defined like this, let this be the base, this be the height and this be the hypotenuse L. So, what is sin theta? Sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse. So, H by L and what is cos theta? It will be B by L that is adjacent side by hypotenuse. So, in that case, if I want to find the length B, all that I have to do is multiply the hypotenuse with cos theta. So, I can say B is equal to L cos theta and similarly, the height H is equal to L sin theta. The same thing applies here. I want to find the x component. So, for each of this force, if I go for the cos component of that force, it will be the horizontal component. F x will be F cos theta and similarly, F y will be F sin theta. So, I will calculate what is F cos theta and F sin theta for all these four forces. I have found out F x and F y. F x uh, for the first F 1 force turns out to be 129.9. F y 75 uh, for F 2 F x will be minus 27.36 F y would be 75.18. Likewise, I have found out F x and F y and these numbers are the summation of all these forces that is sigma F x and this is sigma F y. So, this represents the sum of forces in the x and sum of forces in the y direction. Now, it is asked to find the resultant of these forces. The resultant of these forces is r is equal to square root of f x square plus f y square. So, turn out to be square root of 199.13 square plus 14.12 square, which turns out to be 199.63 Newtons. This is your final resultant force. Now, what about the angle? You can use the same principle here. You have the x component, you have the y component. To find out the resultant angle theta, you, all that you have to do is 
tan inverse of Fy divided by Fx. So, theta of the resultant R is equal to tan inverse of Fy by Fx or sigma Fy by sigma Fx which turns out to be in this case tan inverse of 14.12 divided by 199.13 which is approximately 4.05 degrees. So, this is the final answer that you are interested to look into. Thank you for your patient listening. I hope you are able to follow my lectures. Please leave your feedback in the form of comments in the below section. Until next lecture, it is me signing off.